Hi everyone. Today I wanted to make a video touching the basics on how to choose responsible ethical breeders. Although this video is going to pertain more to the German Shepherd breed, there are some things that may apply to other breeds as well. Keep in mind that everything I go over is not the end all be all. In fact, there's still a whole lot more that goes into choosing a breeder. I'm simply going to list the overall general basics that you should be looking for when choosing a breeder. The first order of business is health testing. In the German Shepherd breed, hips and elbows are the bare minimum that need to be certified. Any breeder that claims, well, my vet said my dog is healthy, or my dog shows no visible signs, is a breeder you want to stay clear from. Dogs in Canada or the US should be certified through OFA, which is the Orthopedic Foundation of Animals. They can also be certified through the A-Stamp program in Germany. When looking at dogs used for breeding, you should always look them up and see their pedigrees online. I use pedigreedatabase.com and workingdog.com. You can use these websites to see the dog's pedigree both horizontally and vertically. Although horizontally is the most common way of looking at a pedigree, vertically is beneficial if you want to see how a dog's offspring or siblings are doing in terms of health and working ability. If a dog is scored OFA good for hips, but many of the siblings or previous offspring of said dog have failing scores, this may be a dog you want to reconsider as the dog is more likely to produce its pedigree than itself. On workingdog.com, not only can you see the dog's hip and elbow scores, but you can also see their ZW number, which is also known as the breed value assessment number. The ZW number is an estimation of the probability that a dog will produce progeny with canine hip dysplasia. The ZW value factors in many variables, but is mostly based on the hip status of a dog's offspring. A ZW score of 100 has been set as the breed's average, so scores less than 100 are the most desirable. This means dogs with a lower score than 100 produce fewer offspring with hip dysplasia than the breed average. A number greater than 100 means the dog produces more offspring with hip dysplasia than the breed average. If we look here, we can see that Crash's ZW score is 78. This is a super hip value. Whether you're looking at an ad or a breeder's website and they claim the dog has a hip and elbow rating, you should always verify. You'd be surprised at how dishonest some people are. On the OFA website, they give us the privilege of being able to search their database for results. You can search by registration number, litter number, OFA number, the dog's name, or kennel name. If there are no results showing, the dog either did not have a passing score or they simply weren't ever evaluated. German Shepherds should also be DM tested. Although DM itself cannot be diagnosed until after the dog has passed away, the genes associated with DM can be found through a simple saliva sample. Dogs will either come back clear, carrier, or affected. Those that have scores clear and carrier are acceptable for breeding. However, two carriers should never be bred together, as this will produce dogs who are affected. DM results will also show on the OFA database. Unfortunately, if a dog has been certified through the SV, there is no online database to prove it. You can, however, ask to see the dog's pedigree because it will have a stamp to verify. If a breeder does not show you proof, this is a huge red flag. Keep in mind that there are plenty of other tests as well. These, however, are just the most common and most crucial. Moving on to titles. The most common title you will see today in the German Shepherd breed is IPO, also known previously as Schutzhund. Schutzhund was originally created as a breed suitability test, and although it has drifted away from how it used to be, many still use this as a way to prove a dog's breeding worthiness. Some argue that IPO does not test the true hardness of a dog, but most people who are purchasing a dog don't need a dog that is hard to the core. They simply need a dog that is overall all-around stability. Keep in mind, there are other sports and titles as well, and IPO is not the end-all be-all. However, IPO being the most common for German Shepherds is the only one I will touch base on in this video. IPO has three levels, IPO 1, IPO 2, and IPO 3. Each level consists of a tracking, obedience, and protection phase. IPO 3 is the highest of each level. The SV system also offers a breed survey for the German Shepherd breed. The breed survey is a detailed analysis of an individual dog which is performed by a judge, also known as a Koremeister, which means breed survey master. The breed survey master critiques the dog as a whole, which consists of the height of the dog, width, weight, circumference and depth of the chest, 
eye color, length and position of the croup, pasterns, front and rear movement, and they will also look at the dog's teeth. The breed survey master will also comment on special qualities of the dog and make specific breeding recommendations and what to look for in a mate for said dog. The judge will either place the dog in breed survey class one, which is KKL1, which means recommended for breeding, breed survey class two, or KKL2, which means suitable for breeding. They can also place the dog in a category of not suitable for breeding. All this information is given on a breed survey report, which the owner keeps. Not any German Shepherd can enter for a breed survey. There are specific requirements that include, but not limited to, have a minimum IPO1 title with at least 80 in protection or an HGH herding title. They have, have to pass an AD, which is an endurance test, have their hips and elbows certified and be clear of dysplasia, and have a minimum of good show rating under SV rules. The dog must also pass a gun test as well as a bite work test. After the bite work test, the dog is given a rating of either pronounced, present, or insufficient. In Germany, only offspring that are born to parents who are breed surveyed will receive pink registration papers. At the end of the day, the breeding dogs and dogs in the pedigree need to have some form of working title to prove their working ability as well as temperament. The owner's account should not be sufficient. If you are specifically looking for a dog for sport or for work, I highly recommend you to find a mentor or somebody knowledgeable to help you find a suitable breeder as there is many more factors that come into play. On workingdog.com, you have the ability to see which events the dog has participated in as well as the dog scores. It is easy for a breeder to email you boasting about how high the dog's scores were. Some are honest, some however are dishonest backyard breeders who simply want to market their dogs for more than they are. If you are in Canada, you can go on the German Shepherd Schutzen Club of Canada's website, which is gssc.ca, and see all official scores of every trial back to 2008. Another way of verifying scores and titles is asking to see the dog's scorebook, which every dog competing in IPO has. I hope I was able to provide you with a little bit of knowledge and insight on the basics of choosing a reputable breeder while keeping this video relatively short without completely boring you to death. Even if you are only wanting to purchase a German Shepherd as a pet, those who breed for sporting or show will almost always have pet quality puppies in their litters. If you are purchasing from somebody who does not title their dogs in some shape or form, you have no way to ensure the temperament of the dog. I really encourage you to do your research when looking for a German Shepherd breeder. Do not take the breeder's word for health testing and titles alone. Do some digging to ensure that they are honest and breeding responsibly.